Привет всем! Welcome to this video review video looking at this Hobby Boss Leopard C2 Canadian main battle tank. Okay, very briefly, yes, recent release, many, many versions of these um, Leopard 1A5 Canadian tanks have previously been released by Hobby Boss, notably the Mexis ones. Why did I get this one? I don't like the Mexis ones. I think they look like Lego tanks, even though they're more maybe interesting being used operationally in Afghanistan, etc. I really like this this version, which is more like the uh, original German Leopard 1A5. However, the distinctive feature of this one is this really large storage box at the back. Previously, this kit would have to be done via a resin conversion. So it's the first time it's been done in plastic. Also, I will sort of mention as well, this might not be the best uh, Leopard C2 kit out there in terms of accuracy. However, let's open up the box and let's have a look at all the parts. Okay, let's get this open. Let's see what's inside. I have got an extra, have a look at that in a second. Uh, usual paraphernalia. Let's start in this compartment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits and pieces, bags there at the bottom. The stickers, the metal parts. Let's see what's inside here. One, two, three, four, five tracks, six. Get these bags open and have a look in detail. Let's kick off with the instructions and all the other paraphernalia. As usual, you get a marketing type brochure showing all the latest stuff, including this Leopard C2. There's some blurb here. I'll tell you what, let's write that down in the description. You can read that in your own time. Two paint schemes are provided out of the box. And obviously this is where you would get your placement of the stickers, decals, decals. Oh, sorry, there is a third, no, there isn't. Same scheme, obviously, overall green or a camo version. The instructions are Hobby Boss, Trumpeteer, Trumpeteer, Hobby Boss. Same sort of thing as we just covered in the Hobby Boss video. Really nicely laid out instructions. First of all, all your parts there. They don't give you note of what's not used. That always is helpful. Hull construction, road wheels, road wheels without poly caps and this in this kit. Tracks, have a look at them in detail. They are not clicked together. They are individual links, very much like that T72 that I've just done. And here we come to the sort of interesting, quirky feature of this kit. We start building up an engine. In fact, this engine step goes on through another three or four pages, ending up with a really, really detailed Leopard Power Pack, Leopard 1 Power Pack, which sadly gets placed into a totally empty hull section. There's no engine bay there. You've done all that work. And as you're gonna see in a second, you won't see it after it's done. Why do they do this? I have no idea. However, the reason, one of the reasons I got this kit is to get this engine. And uh, we'll explain that later on, but it's gonna go hand in hand. Have a look at my Burger Panzer build. And that would be a perfect engine to detail that. So we'll probably do that as a little project. Anyways, moving on instructions, rear plate gets detailed. And there, as we as we sort of said, you see, you get this, this piece here. I think this, we'll check it out on the sprues, but I think that this is actually see-through. So this is the only way you would see all that engine detail. How many, maybe younger modelers, inexperienced modelers would go through all the steps of building up that engine you know and then realize at the end that they can't see it it's just a sort of quirk there are a few quirky things uh, that you do find with uh, some of these kit manufacturers anyways loads of detail goes on to the hull and there as, as we said we uh, we place uh, upper hull to lower hull and uh, 
bye bye engine we don't see you anymore adding on final sort of detail points here just more detail on the upper hull start the turret this is that large storage box that's unique to this Canadian Leopard and again unique features of Canadian Leopards we've got the uh, well I'm going to call it GPMG I think it's an L L7 I, I, I don't know the nomenclature in, in um, the Canadians use but it's a 7.62 machine gun and by step 28 as well we get another really sort of weird feature this is the lifting support beam for the engine power pack which i think would confuse a lot of modelers unless they did really know what that was for so it's actually for that engine power pack um <laughs> why it's there who knows who knows maybe they had some plans that just never reached fruition let's have a look at all the parts in detail now Okay, just uh, pointing out, I'll use my usual presentation style for models. I'll show you the sprue so you can see an overall view and then we'll zoom in so you can see the detail. So we've got two off sprues, road wheels, running gear, that sort of thing. Let's, uh, let's go straight into the detail shot. There we go, really nice hub detail on these road wheels. And this drive sprocket made out of a few components there again to give detail note as well this has been constructed thus that you have got the lightning holes uh, for that drive sprocket two times sprues individual track links let's show you these guys in detail they are nice but also maybe a little bit painful because it does take a lot of work to assemble these you do get a little jig here that helps you you place them in this jig here and cement them together. They do need to be cemented together. There is no pins or anything to um, hold them together without cement. Just flip you over so you can see the pad section. And there you go. On this sprue, mainly that engine power pack. But let's have a look at all the detail again. Just skim through these parts. You can pick up the detail yourself. Really nice fine molding as has come to be expected no need to mention the words flash or anything like that or sink marks you just simply don't get them on these kits and that's why they are high quality in my opinion anyways very fine molding there as well on that tool slightly bent there a little bit but that's the nature of it these are let's see rear um the rear light cluster in solid plastic it's okay we can paint over that no problem whatsoever or get aftermarket parts whatever takes your fancy there's the rear plate there and this huge box I believe is part of the air filters a transmission for the power pack worth pointing out packaging is awesome on these kits including extra protective wrapping to protect the finer more delicate pieces a trait that uh, you see on the trumpeteer kits as well let's just have a look at that we've got the main armament l7 105 millimeter barrel um not the best one i'm going to zoom in there show you that let's zoom in and show you the details on this bruce and it mainly is details okay there we are quite a difficult barrel to reproduce in plastic so I've got an aftermarket one that I'm going to show you later on. I just bought that because basically I could. Many fine detail parts here. Again, parts that's the supercharger obviously for the engine or the power pack. And there is one uh, of the 7.62 millimeter machine guns. I think there might be two including this kit. Maybe wrong. Find out in a minute let's move on okay just very briefly this is the orange hobby 105 millimeter l7 main armament for the leopard 1a5 this is for employment with the main kit i'm sure i can get it to work with the hobby boss kit just as a replacement of the barrel let's compare the detail on this 
to what was in the kit. I'll just show you the instructions in case you're considering getting one of these. The actual barrel itself is one large piece of resin cast onto a metal barrel. You've got very small PE to build up, which are mainly the straps that hold the cladding of the barrel uh, onto the barrel itself. And then this shows you where they locate on. So yeah, a little bit tricky, a little bit challenging. And finally there we've got like this part of the targeting, you know, the bore sighting of, of the barrel. First of all, the barrel itself needs to be separated off of this pouring uh, stubs here. What I'm seeing here is a line separating, it's running horizontally down the barrel length. I need to check again. That might be deliberate, might not be. I need to check my references to see, you know, what the L7 barrel looks like. Obviously the cladding is composed of two parts, but where would we see a seam? Is it there or, or otherwise? So we'll check all that out. It's got a little bit of weight to it because obviously it's got the, the internal structure as brass and that is perfect because previously I have seen, you know, some castings of uh, resin of resin barrels would actually have a, a droop to them or they would be out of square because of uh, not having the right support structure when the resin was cooling but this is perfectly straight and aligned looks really good very small resin details like i said for that uh, part of the bore sighting then final part of, the final part of detail is this photo etch fret with uh, the detailing of those little clamps that go around the barrel itself quite a nice detailed little kit in itself and on this i think this is the final big sprue with most of the turret detailing parts on it including this additional clad on armor for the turret and the mantlet let's have a look at these in detail i have quite a nice uh, mantlet detail there and this cladding I need to read up on that i'm not quite sure what it is but it has got some texture on it, etc. Same, uh, the original armor that was on the leopard on the Leopard One A Five original one. These are the um, cleats for the tracks for ice. Some Pioneer tools. Notice here on the Pioneer tools, even the the lifting handle is actually hollowed out. First time I've seen that. Part of the turret basket there, nice and fine detail. And also again, on this wire cutter tool as well, they've hollowed out the, uh, the actual um, clamps that hold it onto the vehicle hull. And to show it's a legacy part as well, here we are, the MG3, like the, basically the, uh, the son of the MG42, the World War II MG42. This is the MG3 machine gun that would be mounted on the 1A5 Bundeswehr version. Obviously not employed on this kit. Smaller sprue, better just point out as well. This is, these are the parts that you will use for the turret cladded armor with this cut out. So on the previous sprue, they didn't have that. That's because the Canadian version I think it's got their smoke grenade discharges and some sort of devices here that peek out of the um, that attach directly to the uh, side of the turret. I won't let's see what's inside there. I believe oh, these are really really fine parts, like super fine. So I think we'll leave this protective padding on in place. Kudos again to Hobby Boss Trumpeteer. For doing that and again of course just to point out as well texture is on on these parts as well just group all these together the smaller parts two off of each zoom you in there show you these parts these ones being the most distinctive you know new sprue that enable this kit to be built up as the leopard c2 there we go one of the first it's like generic detail parts return rollers some other bits and pieces, I'm not too sure where they go. More fine detail on this one, including the smoke grenade discharges. 
make sure you check over and make sure you're using the right stuff because you can just see in a second on this sprue and we've got two off we've got another mantlet we don't use this mantlet off of this sprue but this is sort of the ancillaries some uh, water or petrol cans there and a different type of smoke grenade discharger so you need to check through the instructions there's going to be a few bits and pieces left over obviously because this is the original kit was the uh, the Bundeswehr Leopard 1A5 and this is the new kit so a lot of the parts are generated from the first kit so here we are that very large distinctive storage box need to check my references here find out what these are are these handles or are they loops for holding foliage uh, could I detail them better I'm not too sure I'm gonna have a look at references check that out um, see what's what on this box here uh, fine details again and yet another 7.62 millimeter machine gun okay apologies for doing this to you I haven't I've un not unbagged this part uh, just because I'm concerned about breaking off these parts I'm sure um, you as as I don't appreciate reviews where parts are not unbagged so that they don't show you the detail I really <laughs> want to show you all the detail but in this case um, we're just trying to look through the cellophane and show you these side skirts they have got a nice texture to them if you can if the camera's not picking them up very finely detailed as I said this part I do not want to snap off at this point anyways clear part sprue mainly periscopes and part of the fire control system optics laser range finder that sort of thing no headlights but uh, you have got that sprue of clear parts and uh, yeah I'll just bring you back there because there was no clear part for the headlight the headlight is solid plastic bit of a negative there really um, and disappointing on the on this kit you would expect that part to be in clear alas it's not foot wedge parts on two frets one being a very small fret of details for the side of the hull and some straps there mainly the engine grills and some other details I'm not too sure where they got this stage not too sure if you use all of them anyways not that massive a sprue photo etch but I do like it when kits have got this detail included a piece of wire is provided for the tow cable of note it's malleable it's not springy wire like the dragon kits it is usable here's the stickers as we know only uh, Canadian markings as Canada was the only country to use the Leopard C2 okay finally the hero parts as I like to call them the larger slide molded parts just sort of mock this up as well to show you how big or small the vehicle is quite small actually Leopard 1A5 first uh, variant of Leopard I really like the form factor of the vehicle a lot in particular the turret anyways let's have a look at these parts in detail okay lower hull with uh, some details molded on mainly just the mounting points for the suspension swing arms no texture to speak of on the lower hull a little bit of detailing there around where the transmission drives the drive sprockets and that's basically it I think there's something inside here is there a date on it no it just says leopard one upper hull again it's devoid of any sort of um, texture and there shouldn't be any texture anyways this is rolled armor plate despite what you may see on other videos there is no texture to rolled armor plate it is rolled it's flat so you wouldn't see anything you wouldn't see anything um, on towards the uh, mounting points for the pioneer tools are cast on um, what I'm not really seeing is any real weld marks and that might have to be looked at with a bit more detail there are some questions about the accuracy of some elements of this kit but uh, you can see a plate detail there but I thought there might be possibly a weld bead at the back maybe not I'm not 100% sure so I'm not really going to get into that stage but anyway it's quite a nice upper hull I'm pretty sure you'd agree 
finally the turret all these moldings here are what secures on the uh, clad armor and the texture on here is really quite weird to be honest um, but fortunately it gets covered up with the cladding but I wouldn't sort of say you know it's kind of difficult to recreate cast texture on there now this this might be an area that you might go in with Mr. Surfacer or something and reproduce it I would check references first to see if it's visible now these here these are blanking plates uh, Leopard 1 had original like World War 2 sighting systems basically uh, binocular yeah so a sight there sight there triangulate the um, distance to the target and this tank was updated equipped with an LRF so they put blanking plates on where the sights used to be so but there is a question about the shape of these and that's what I've noticed and that would be quite difficult to correct I can live with it can you it depends really on you know how much you're into Canadian armor I'm, so, I'm so, sort of thinking but uh, you know not bad again I don't see I barely see like a weld bead around there might need to check some references in fact probably what I'm going to do is uh, go to Mike Shackleton's site and I think there's a pretty good article from Anthony Stewart who I don't think he, he helped with this one he definitely helped with the main kits and he's got some correction advice for building these kits so that would be you know interesting for myself for the you know average sort of guy um, you know perfectly acceptable kit now guys do you, do you want to see it built uh, I want a hundred comments saying yes I want to see this built and it'll be the next armor build up there if not we'll uh, put it on the back burner for a while anyways hope you enjoyed the review and see you soon.